Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys how I add highlights to a drawing. So I'm gonna start out by drawing a little sphere. I'm sure you guys have seen this before. Uh, this is just gonna be our reference point for of the other drawings I do throughout the video, just to kind of show you um, how highlights work with the shape you're working on. It's important to know where your shadows are uh, to determine where you're going to put your highlights. So knowing that the shadows are on the lower side, uh, lower right hand side of the sphere, my primary highlight is gonna go on the upper left corner of it. To show those little hot spots of light, I just do uh, little circles, um, very simple, easy way to show those hot spots. Uh, for this rim light, so the very edge of the sphere, I just kind of do a, a thin um, highlight that kind of goes around the upper left corner. So like I said, I like determining where my shadows are uh, before I add in my highlights. Uh, it just helps keep uh, the drawing consistent. Um, and I added those little stones that you see beneath the sphere, just so you can see how the light affects things around your object as well, and how that can also establish a light source. So the three stones that are on the back right of the, um, of the sphere, they don't have any highlights on them, and you can see how that kind of helps establish like where the light uh, can't reach because the sphere is in the way. So I use the Jelly Roller pin 90% of the time, but occasionally, if you want a softer light, a softer highlight, I use a white Prismacolor pencil, any white prism or color pencil will work. But this will just kind of lighten things up and it works really awesome on the tone tan paper. Um, you can do all your highlights with a white color pencil, to be honest. Uh, I just find the Jelly Roller pens a little bit faster because you can get really bright with the white color pencil. Uh, what you see me doing right here is the re the reflected light. Um, so that's light that kind of bounces off of the ground and bounces back towards your object. Uh, and that can really, you know, help make your object pop even more. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a generic face and show you how a head is really similar to that sphere you saw me draw a second ago. And we're going to add the same highlights to this head that we added to that sphere. So right here you see me switch to a blue big pin and I like to just darken up areas of my drawing just for aesthetic purposes. So the next step I normally do is I add my colors in now uh, versus adding in the highlights before I add in my colors. Uh, you can see I like doing this too because you can really see how the highlights really make a drawing pop. Um, the drawing looks pretty flat but right here I'm adding in shadows with a uh, lavender color. Again, establishing where my shadows are before I add the highlights. So right here on the forehead, you see me add those two little hot spots, same as I did on the sphere. Um, it just makes the object look round. So now I kind of have to understand the shapes that I'm working with because you need to know, okay, the nose sticks out off the face. It's not in shadow. Uh, the tip of the nose, and so that's where I'll add a, a shadow. Same with the cheek where I added that hot spot as well. These are areas that aren't in shadow. You can see that by where you establish your shadows at. You would never put a highlight in a shadowed area. Um, and so the lips, anything that protrudes off of the face that's in a lighted area, I kind of like to add highlights to. So how I added highlights to the hair is kind of a technique thing. Um, I'm sh you probably, if you've seen comic book art, you've seen highlights added to hair like this, and it's kind of like a share, uh, a highlight that gets broken up by the strands of hair, and you have these kind of streak highlights that kind of go through it, uh, and that's just a technique thing. You can kind of see how I did it there, um, and that's a preference type deal, so, you know, you might have the way you do hair highlights different. Maybe you like softer highlights for the hair, because... You also have to think about the material that you're doing highlights on. If it's a very shiny surface, then you're gonna to wanna to do a harder edge highlight. So I, 
I tend to do harder edge highlights on everything, just a stylistic choice on my part. But right here I'm adding um, highlights with colored pencil, which actually suits the skin a little bit more because skin isn't that reflective unless you have really shiny skin or wet skin. Uh, so it's definitely, um, if I'm doing a more realistic illustration, I'm gonna use colored pencil to do skin highlights. And then if I want wet parts of the skin, maybe around the eyes or anything like that, then I'll use a much harder edge highlight. So highlights can actually add texture to an illustration. You can see the texture of the colored pencil on the paper um, can kind of give you a porous look to the skin, which you know, as you get better at adding highlights and using it, um, you can really add awesome textures. And I show you a little bit uh, how I do that on uh, the like skull creature drawing, the green skull guy that I do uh, in a little bit, um, how you can really add a lot of bumps and textures with your highlights. So now we did a softer character and now I'm gonna do, uh, cause I do a lot of robots, you guys know this. So robots are gonna have metal. They're gonna be much shinier than like somebody's face or clothing. Uh, so this is another kind of, you know, way to do your highlights that are, it's gonna make metals and things like that really look shiny. So the other uh, way I use the jelly roller pin is to make things look like they're glowing. So his eyes that I just added, you know, they're gonna be very bright and I want them to look like maybe they're, you know, brighter than the, everything else because it's light. Uh, so I'll use the jelly roll pen not just to do highlights, but to add uh, light sources um, uh, into the drawing. So taking my light source, because I added all the shadows in, and now I'm going to add in all these highlights. I'm going to look for ridges uh, that his, you know, the plates that are surrounding him kind of form. And I'm going to take the ridges and the hard edges of those ridges, um, I'm going to add real strong highlights to uh, any round objects. If it's round and the round side that's facing the light source, I'm going to add line ridges as well uh, for the highlights. And that's just going to make everything kind of pop out and look like it's round. So with this little robot guy, you can see how similar he is to that sphere. Uh, the, uh, the rim light I'm adding right now to his back is really going to make his overall form look round. Um, and it's really going to give you that strong light source on his back. So you know that that's, you know, that's where the light is hitting strongest. So for robots, I don't use any colored pencil generally. Uh, and that's because, you know, like I said, it's very shiny, very hard edged highlights are going to make things look even shinier. Um, so I don't really use colored pencil when I'm doing robot characters. So this creature guy, goblin guy, whatever he is, in his dad pants, you'll see those soon. Uh, he, I'm gonna show you guys how I add like texture uh, to a character by using highlights. Um, highlights, you know, they have a lot of cool uses uh, and a, a lot of things that I don't even actually cover in this video. Um, but I would have to say they really pull the drawing off the page. It's one of the funnest parts of the drawing to do is the highlights because then you can really just see it come alive. So now you have a much more complex shape in this guy. You can see I added in all my shadows and then I'm gonna go right over the top of all my shadows with colored um, the markers. And right here, I'm gonna add so much more highlight than I did on the previous drawings. Uh, and this, these little dots that I'm adding, I'm using these as kind of show the texture of his skin. So these are like little warts. Um, and then, you know, highlighted parts that really break up and adds uh, dimension to this character. Um, it's just a lot more elaborate highlights 
than the previous stuff you've seen. And that's why I love drawing creatures so much too, is because you can get so much detail on their skin. You don't have to worry about making their skin look nice and pretty like the girl's head above. You can just get really textural and it just makes the drawing pop off the page. So as you can see, I'm primarily adding highlights to all the left side, upper left area of things. Now his head, his shoulders, those are the parts closest to the light source. So I'm gonna add a lot more light to those areas than anywhere else on the drawing. Um, and this definitely helps, you know, if you're looking at this guy, you see his head as just a sphere, uh, his chest, you know, and his body. Um, I'm gonna add little highlights to his skin, just little ones though, no real hard, like uh, large highlights because you know, his stomach and his chest area, not a lot of light is reaching that area. And even though not a lot of light is reaching that area, I want to add those little highlights because like I said before, the purpose of those highlights is to establish that skin texture. At this point, I'm just kind of looking at the character, seeing how, um, you know, little areas of his skin might come out, like his little eyelids right there I added highlights to. Uh, I added a couple like spittle between his teeth, uh, things like that. These are all just really fun, detail-focused things to add to your drawing. Um, another cool trick that I'm gonna show you in a second, and so right now he's got extremely hard white light uh, highlights that are on his body. But a cool thing you can do with the markers and these jelly roller pens uh, and you can do this with the jelly roll pens and it doesn't work great with colored pencil is you can see that I'm going over the white highlights with color and it changes the color of the highlights. This is awesome. This really knocks those highlights down and make them look more like they're part of his skin versus white light that's um, being reflected onto him. Because the markers are transparent, you can really, you can do this with any color and it looks great. I would definitely suggest you guys experiment with this with the jelly roller pens and then going over those jelly roller pens with uh, the markers. Right there, you can see I added, you know, highlights to his dad jeans. Um, those are some nice dockers that he's got on and uh, that really shows the contrast between the, the hard highlights and his, the material that his jeans are made out of. So right here, this is a really cool thing too. I'm gonna take my dark blue uh, Bic pen and I'm gonna take these highlights and just on the underside, add little shadows to them. This is really gonna make them pop off of his skin. Like these are actually warts. You only wanna do this to the little specks um, that you're highlighting here uh, that you've kind of established are warts. So and. So how I'm doing this is I'm just randomly picking out some of the highlights that I used. When I first made those highlights, I didn't intend them to be warts necessarily. I just kind of look at the character, look at the illustration and say, you know what, that, that looks like a good shape that would look like a wart. I'm gonna add a little um, drop shadow to that. Uh, and you can see how it really makes his skin look textural. So I'm going over the whole drawing now with the darker pen and just kind of adding details to it. One cool thing you can do uh, that also helps your highlights and just helps your light source in general is you can see on the sides of his body that don't have light hitting them. Uh, that's where I'm gonna go over with the darkest lines um, and I'm gonna make them thicker a lot of times, especially if I'm using a brush pen. Uh, you can see right there on his shoulder, uh, the backside of his arm, um, those are areas I'm going to use thick dark line on and then the upper left areas. So I don't even touch those upper left areas because they're still in light. So they're going to have a, um, they're not going to have real dark shadows on them. This is definitely going to help your character look, um, a lot more, uh, modeled dimensional, um, and just pop off the page even more. Right here, I'm gonna show you guys uh, a completely different type of drawing that I do. Uh, and this is gonna be with the brush pen. Uh, so I'll establish kind of a rough character idea, some of the shapes, be really loose with it. Uh, and then 
I'm going to go over everything with a, a brush pen. Um, and what I'm doing here, and the difference in this drawing versus the other ones, this is a very harsh, dark, uh, dark light, um, very extreme contrast between your highlights and your shadowed areas. As where the other ones, you know, using the, the lavender marker to do my shadows, uh, this is more extreme light. It's going to make your character look extremely modeled. Um, and have a lot of dimension and it's just a different style. I love this style as well I haven't been doing a whole lot of it, uh, but it looks really great. I think uh, So now that I've got my shapes and everything kind of carved out of this guy. I'm gonna go through and add Extreme highlights to him just on the highlighted areas. You can see the shoulder that I just added in there There's no outer line edge the light goes is the light is what really forms um, that shoulder muscle, uh, and that's kind of what you're looking at. You're looking at establishing and breaking up the shapes of this guy. You don't need to do outlines. Outlines a lot of times flattens out your drawing, um, but these really hard, big chunks of light uh, really make your character look just like they're popping off the page and just carved out of light. Uh, the so right now I'm actually adding a mid tone. So right now you've got your darkest dark and your lightest light on the page. And what I'm doing with the, the shadow here is just adding a little bit of mid tone, um, not going all the way to the edges of the light, uh, but it even adds more dimension to your character and it just gives it a really cool look. Well guys, that's the video. I hope this was informative. Um, if you have any questions about how I add these light sources or anything like that, or if I totally forgot to put something in the video, just ask below and I'll do my best to answer your questions. Um, thanks for watching. And as always, uh, if you found this informative, subscribe and I will catch you guys later.